G'day, welcome to the Glenfiddich Hunting Lodge. Um, this very basic hut up on top of a hill here in the headwater country of the Brisbane Valley has been or has turned into something that's probably quite iconic with uh, thousands of hunters now. Uh, and literally we have had, over the last 20 odd years, we've had thousands of hunters come through here. And a lot of the people that are some of the big names in this in the hunting industry of this country. It's, it's a place where a lot of hunters say to Judy and I that they can come here and just relax. They can kick back and go out and hunt a deer if they want. But more so, they can get here with their mates, they can burn a bit of wood and uh, just enjoy, just get back to, to basics. Unfortunately, this weekend, we're pulling this old hut down. And uh, I can only say that it's, it's like I'm, I'm losing a part of myself. Um, so losing a family member. And this has been, yeah, a lot of blood, sweat and tears have gone into that. Uh, yeah, a lot of great memories. But unfortunately, what's happening is that this state is far different to other states in this country and it's far different to other countries. And that's probably what I'll try and explain now. So our, our, our Ridge members, our Glenfiddich members, anybody that's watching this can understand. In Queensland, here in Queensland, Australia, we do not have game hunting legislation. We do not have it. New South Wales has it. They've got their game licensing unit, which was the game council. Uh, you can get an R license, a G license as a recreational hunter and go out in the bush and hunt. Victoria, you can go in and buy a hunting license. You can buy a duck shooting license. You can get that a game license in Victoria. Tasmania, they've got a great program in Tasmania. You can do the same thing. Um, New Zealand, Canada. America, you, people are used to buying game licenses and having game legislation. Here in Queensland, we do not have it. Now, we've tried to go to extreme lengths to explain this to hunters and, and explain the ramifications, but li literally they, they haven't taken it up. They haven't understood. Some people are coming around and they're understanding, but for the majority, they are just, uh, yeah, they just hoping that what they want to be true is true, but it's not true. In this state, we have to be working under a, uh, an act of legislation, okay? Uh, we've got the Animal Care and Protection Act. Basically, what it says is that it is an offence to kill an animal without a valid reason. So if you kill an animal, just kill it just because you feel like it, you have breached the Animal Care and Protection Act. You can be prosecuted for animal cruelty. That's the way it is. If you've got a sufficient reason to do so, uh, to kill an animal, then there are offence exemptions. So you've still basically committed an offence, but there's an exempt exemption from prosecution. But you've got to be working directly under that Act regulation legislation. So right, what have we got to work under here in Queensland? We've got the Biosecurity Act 2014-18 and the Animal Care and Protection Act. It is possible that we might be able to sit under the Weapons Act, even though hunting is not clearly defined. Hunters will have to be very careful then how they see themselves, either as a pest controller or a true hunter, because this will have ramifications on your firearms categories. So the Animal Care and Protection Act, it sees all our introduced species as pests. So all you can be doing is controlling pest animals for a landowner on that landowner's property in their eyes. So recreational hunters that say, oh, I'm out there hunting for fun, I'm hunting for uh, meat, I'm hunting for a trophy. Well, technically, all you're going to be doing is killing pests. And most hunters say, oh, well, we'll, we'll just say we're killing pests and we'll really go hunting. So it's, 
it's a cover-up. It's a grey area. Uh, hunters think that they're covered. Okay. Insurance comes into it. So a landowner here, let's put it this way, in Queensland, if a landowner is allowing you onto their property to control pest animals, then you are doing a job that a, a professional pest controller would charge them for. So you're basically a volunteer. You're aiding, you're assisting that landowner. So under the Workplace Health and Safety Act that we've got here, which covers all businesses in um, the state, under the Workplace Health and Safety Act, you'll be seen as a volunteer. You're a volunteer controlling pest animals for that landowner. He then, he or she, the landowner is the principal business owner. They are responsible for uh, workplace health and safety. I think at this stage I've really got to reiterate that there doesn't seem to be any clear factor to differentiate between a worker and employee and uh, say a contractor. It's really open to interpretation. My personal advice would be just don't go there. If you are a proud recreational hunter, then be a recreational hunter. Keep to your values, train your children the same way, take your trophies, take your personal use venison and be proud of who you are. If you are, if you are a uh, pest controller, then control them as pests, put them in a pit in the ground, put them through for pet meat or human consumption, uh, shoot them and leave them lie. If that's what your job is, do it. The worst thing you could do at this stage is say your one thing and be doing it another. That is being insincere. Okay, let's say something goes wrong, something happens. Somebody goes out in the bush there, they have an accident, but let's just say somebody is dead on a property and they've been controlling animals for the landowner. And then uh, somebody, whether it be a relation, loved one, somebody decides to sue the landowner because they say that that landowner was negligent. That if the landowner had been doing their job, their loved one would not be dead. Okay, so they go to sue them. Okay, for a start, workplace health and safety will come involved because they're saying, well, somebody's dead, uh, who's responsible? Was that person pro wearing proper PPE? Were they um, given a induction? Were they giving a pre-start um, briefing? Were they do given a debriefing after their activities? Uh, were hazards identified to them? Were all these things done? And really, that that's the safe work method statements that a landowner should have uh, for any employee. So literally, if the landowner says, well, no, I just let them go out there and do what they wanted to, and somebody's dead, and they were controlling pest animals for that landowner as a volunteer, then that landowner is responsible. Uh, they can be seen as negligent, and they can be then uh, in a worst case scenario, could be seen for um, that they have committed industrial manslaughter uh, by not taking a proper duty of care with that person. Now, right, I'm no legal eagle, I'm no, no lawyer, but I've talked to dozens of different barristers and solicitors on this, and this is what they have told me. I've sat with one of the police commissioners of this state, and he said to me, Clark, Look at everything you do as if you were sitting in, standing in front of a coroner. Somebody's died, wasn't your fault, but somebody's dead on your watch. And they're asking you the worst questions of your life. So you're there, try, you're going to tell the truth. You'd be crazy if you don't tell the truth. So if that coroner says to you, were those people recreational hunting on the property? Were they out there hunting for venison or a trophy or well, for fun, for sport, as recreational hunters? Were they doing that or were they purely pest controlling? And you'd have to think long and hard about your answer, okay? Because if you say, no, 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 they're definitely pest controlling, well, you know in your heart that you're lying. And that coroner, that judge, the magistrate, 
picks up on that and says, yep, you're lying and can prove it, can prove it by a Facebook post or somebody else backs them up on it or whatever, whatever it may be. If they can prove it, well, then I think you're in the big house for perjury. Uh, that's the way it is. So you would be crazy not to say, no, well, actually, these guys, they love their hunting. They're out there. I know they're classed as a pest animal, but they were hunting. They were having fun. They were out there to hunt, as hunters do. They'd be telling the truth. So then you're not compliant under the Biosecurity Act. Um, if it can be established that you haven't taken proper care under workplace health and safety, then righto, you've got an insurance policy on your property that is uh, covering you uh, for people working on your property. But it will only cover you if you have not been uh, criminally negligent. Mm -hmm. It will cover you for negligence, but it's a very grey area in a lot of the clauses in these policies. You can read them and it says that you have to be compliant. You have to be following uh, whatever regulation, act, uh, legislation is there uh, for those activities. And if you say you're not, if you're not, well then, I think you're going a million. And that's the situation we're facing here. So what's happened? What's happened on this property here? For many years, our little team in the Ridge Group has tried to develop a system that could cover all the bases, that could allow recreational hunters to exist and operate under current legislation, under the Biosecurity Act. And we've had meetings with ministers, we've written sustainable use papers, gone to conferences. You know, we've done a lot for many years. The system we've developed is what we call a right to harvest system, whereby an entity, a business, like my business, Wild Country Adventures, can buy the hunting rights off that landowner to say, okay, you've got pest animals, what's regarded as pest animals on your property. We want to buy the right to harvest the products off those animals. If we're a professional um, game meat harvester, we'll have a rack on our back of our vehicle, we'll be accredited and we can shoot those animals and hang them up and sell the meat. If we're not accredited that way, there is no impediment to us uh, for us to go and shoot for skins or antlers, for capes, whatever like that. And we can have people assist us to do that. And that's what we've done. We've had <gasps> recreational hunters assisting us to harvest, to shoot the animals that are regarded as uh, pests or feral on these landowners' properties. But we have bought the right to do that from the landowner. We're not a contractor being paid by that landowner to go and shoot animals for that landowner. So we're not a contractor. We're a freelance, free enterprise business that has bought the rights off that landowner. That then separates the landowner. They have um, um, followed their uh, biosecurity obligation where they've got to control feral animals on their property. So their way of doing that is they've sold that harvesting. They've got to make sure that there's, we're taking enough animals off that property. But apart from that, the landowners have got no um, activity in the hunting. They stay right out of it. Nothing to do with it. They just tell us that they, they have been responsible by looking to make sure that we have got a, a, a safe work method statements in place, the best practice. We've got maps. We've got you know people wearing blaze orange. We do inductions. We do pre-starts. We do the whole lot. And because those landowners have been satisfied that we're, we're up to a high standard uh, with our property-based plan, then it's up to us to do the rest. And that's been a separation that we have built into our system. Uh, the landowners then have their own public liability and they'd have to be seen as negligent. Um, for them to be in trouble, they'd have to be seen as negligent of putting somebody on there that wasn't following best practice procedures. Okay? That's the way we've done it. We've used recreational hunters to harvest those animals. And, pe and we realise they're pest animals under legislation. The hunters are taking skins, they're taking the meat if they want to, they're taking antlers, and we can charge them for 
assisting us with that program. It's a business, okay? Those hunters then become our clients of our business. Unfortunately now, insurance has become one heck of a battle for most people in here. And most insurance companies aren't covering what they see as game hunting, anything to do with recreational hunting, bow hunting, out. But they will cover a landowner if they're controlling pest animals. So that means that any landowner that's letting somebody on their property to hunt a pig or a deer or a goat, that's a recreational hunter that's out there hunting them for sport, for meat or whatever, that landowner has to be prepared if something goes wrong to stand up in front of a judge and lie. That's what we've tried to avoid. That's the situation here in Queensland. We have got a good system. Unfortunately, it is in trouble. And because of that, this landowner here wants to do it themselves. They seem prepared that if something went wrong, that they would stand up in front of a judge and say, no, no, we weren't recreational hunting. That sits okay with them. It does not sit with me. And because of that, this all goes. End of an era. Sorry to say, guys.